Tired, weary, frustrated? What would you be doing if you weren't raising children alone? What's stopping you from living your best life now? On Solo Moms Talk, I discuss with solo mothers the challenges you face raising children alone. So if you're a working solo mom dealing with independent children, insensitive bosses, weight and health issues, or even debt collectors, join us as we discover your path to get and stay healthy, increase your income, and live with joy and purpose. In this battle to keep your head My guest today is author and podcast host Yogi Aaron. Welcome, Yo- your name's Aaron. <laughs> Are you being you know? me Aaron or Yogi <laughs> or Yogi Welcome, Aaron? Aaron. It's nice uh, to have you. <laughs> the Yogi often throws people off because um, they think of like Yogi Bear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm yeah. turning into a bear as I get older, so. <laughs> oh, don't do that. Okay. Yes, unless you're hibernating. Okay, well, never mind. Anyway, um, so I'm very glad that you were able to come and speak to me today. I appreciate you. Um, before we get into some more talking, can you tell us who is Yogi Aaron? And <laughs> added to that, who is Aaron? Sure. So uh, I am a person that cares deeply about humanity's evolution and that I believe that, you know, we're all here to fulfill a purpose, a life's purpose, um, and that I am a person that's very committed to obviously fulfilling my purpose and living in purpose, but also to help others. I don't want to say help others remove their to find their purpose, but to remove the obstacles that are separating them from remove, you know, from attaining their purpose. So I can't help a person fulfill their purpose, but I try to, as a yoga teacher and as someone who has been studying uh, pain, uh, physical pain and emotional pain for, you know, most of my life, that I find like those are the two greatest obstacles to fulfilling life's purpose. So that's that's who I am in a nutshell. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, and the Yogi part, <laughs> Yogi Aaron is just a title, like Mister, you know, Mister Aaron, you mm-hmm. know, young Aaron. And I uh, and a Yogi is someone who practices yoga. So that's why I call myself Yogi Aaron. Okay, thank you. And thank you for setting me straight. <laughs> I got a little confused at the moment. Right, so I, I appreciate you sharing uh, a little bit of personal stuff. And I just want to know, um, uh, what got you into yoga? Why yoga? Well, I think that like most people, I thought that yoga was going to be something that would help me stay young and help me to become more healthy. And it was kind of like when I created my podcast, which is more like a documentary kind of style podcast. It's more of a series than uh-huh. you know a weekly podcast. It's more like a it's an eight part series. And when I was doing research for it, and I started interviewing people, one of the most common two things that people think of when they think of stretching is I want to be healthy, or this is going to keep me healthy. It's going to keep me young and. And I had those same erroneous perceptions as well. When I was 18 years old, I started to look around at people and I realized people who were sort of older, but younger in spirit had more like uh, ability to move around. And so I started to commit myself to keeping my mobility through yoga, which equated to me stretching. So I was really into stretching. I was really into the mobility part of it rather than really what yoga is about is the healing and the introspection and the affirmation of who we are in the world. And it wasn't, you know, as soon as I started doing yoga, I started really hurting myself. 
And it was because I was hurting my, I started hurting myself more and more that I started to do more yoga, which then caused me to hurt myself more. So it took me really, be quite honest, um, Jennifer, like 30 years to figure that part out. Like maybe this stuff isn't really helping to be it's causing more. <laughs> took me a little while to uh, mm. that part out. Mm. So why do you think that yoga was hurting you? Because everybody thinks that yoga is this amazing thing that we should be doing, right? So why was it harmful to you? Well, two things I want to kind of preface. First of all, everybody should do yoga. <laughs> because everybody will feel better. But mm -hmm. what the mistake is, is that people think when they think of yoga, they think of stretching. And so stretching and flexibility have kind of hijacked yoga. Yoga has absolutely nothing to do with stretching and flexibility. And, and that's kind of what I'm, what I'm working on is to flip the script on stretching in terms of yoga, especially and flexibility and bring to mind what yoga is really about is cultivating stability and stability at a fundamental level. Um, like a, a biomechanical at a, at a level of body is to get the muscular system working properly um, so that the muscular system can support bones and the joints of the body. And we can uh. be able to, and, and to kind of bring that into real world terms. I mean, you know, you need a muscular system to go to the grocery store to buy groceries and bring those, right. every groceries back into the home. We need, you know, a muscular system to go to walk. You know, you get together with your girlfriends and, and you go to the coffee shop and you walk. So um, we need a healthy muscular system just to be able to function in life. And uh -huh. evidence that a lot of people are losing this is just go to Disney World. And you see a lot of people that are struggling just to have movement in their life. <laughs> I yeah, spent yeah. my 50th birthday at Disney World. It was kind of a dream come true. But one of the things that really shocked me was how many uh, people, young people, are losing mobility in their bodies because they don't have a muscular system that works. Uh, mm -hmm. So we need a good body to just enjoy life, to enjoy Disney World, you know? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, so, you know... I I equate your stretching with yoga as well, so, but I also equate flexibility because when I yes. when my joint not moving the way they should, I'm thinking I should be doing yoga all the time so that I could move, right? So yes. am I right there, or what, what is the disconnect in that statement? So the disconnect isn't your fault. The disconnect is basically the projection that. If you want healthier joints, we need to stretch. But the mm -hmm. problem with stretching, Jennifer, is that stretching starts to actually disable muscles. It actually makes muscle function disabled. Um, and so if we do a test, if we test muscular strengths, for example, and if the muscles are testing strong and then we go and do a stretch, and then we retest those muscles, they're always going to test weak. Um, huh. Their force, the force output of those muscles disappears. And the simple explanation, there's a few explanations about why, but one of them, the most simplest one is that, that before we stretched, when the muscle was testing strong, the brain is connected to the muscle. The brain knows where that muscle is in space. Um, there's a sense in the, the scientific word or the biomechanical word is proprioception. So the brain knows where the muscle is in space. Like this is the space uh -huh. and my brain is connected. But as soon as we start to stretch that muscle, the brain becomes disconnected from the muscle. Um, it no longer knows where that muscle is in space. So one of the things that you said, which was interesting, was I've got stiff joints, meaning like, you know, my joints just aren't moving well. But uh -huh. the, the thing is, is like the reason why your joints are stiff or the reason why your joints are not moving well 
probably because your body senses instability. When the body senses instability, and what I mean by that is like if you are walking on ice, now you you are not living in a cold climate right now, so you probably forgot about it. But in the first sort of like, you know, cold part of, of the year in the fall or early winter, when there's ice on the ground, you step out of your house and you slip a little bit on the ice. What does your body do? It, it mm-hmm. tightens up. Right. And that tightening up is a biomechanical response. It's a protective mechanism. The body will contract uh, when it senses like instability. So in coming back to your joints, if you want to loosen those joints, if you want to use that word loosen, that what we need to do is not stretch it, but actually make sure that the muscles surrounding the joint are working properly. So like, for example, you think about your knees, your knees are good joints, but there's Mm -hmm. so many muscles that kind of support that joint. Well, if the body is sensing instability, it sends out a nationwide uh, amber alert, you know, danger, 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 tighten up, tighten up, tighten up. So all those Mm -hmm. muscles that tighten up, which then restricts movement in the joint. What we need to do is to get those muscles working Properly, it activating them. So that's the muscle activation part of what I teach. And to make sure that those joints actually have more movement, but also more importantly, stability. And when we have stability, we have all the mobility that we want in our body. Mm, yeah, I, I can, I, I understand that. And I understand needing mobility, especially as you get older um, and, you know, you want to maintain that, you want to maintain the flexibility. Um, And it's funny that the stretching is the, like the anti-yoga, like anti-health, the um, anti-optimal practice. Um, Because I walk a lot. And whenever I don't feel well after walking, I think I should stretch more, I should stretch more. But that's not the right thing to do from what you're telling me. Yeah. Well, what I would say is the best thing you can do after walking is rest your body. What you would want to do before you walk is to make sure that your muscles are are activated. So like a lot of times, going back to the knees, for example, a lot of times most knee problems can be traced to your glutes. For example, so the mm-hmm. glutes, your butt, <laughs> your buttocks, <laughs> um, isn't working properly. Well, if it's not working properly, um, one of the ways to think about the glutes, well, there's a few things, but one of them is like they're the shock absorbers of the body. And so when you're walking out there, you're, you're creating this, um, uh, uh, you're hitting the pavement and that's sending a shock up into the knees and into the hips. If the glutes are not working properly, the knees start bearing the brunt of Mm. that impact. So you're walking, you're creating impact. And when your glutes aren't working properly, there's the shock absorbers. Your, Your knees are like part of the axle system of the body. Your lower back is also like the axle. So if the shock absorbers aren't working, then the axle, the knees in this case, or the lower back is going to start becoming impacted. And so we want to make sure that the glutes are working. So what I would suggest to you, like one exercise, there's a few, but one of the exercises is just simply come into bridge pose. And um, so if you can think about like bridge pose, for example, Mm -hmm. or for a moment in your head, is when you're lying on your back, your knees are bent, Um, your arms are to the sides and you push your hips up to the sky and you squeeze your glutes as much as you care. And you do that and you do that six seconds and do it six times. And it was really interesting, Jennifer, because I literally just had this beautiful email sent to me uh, from a woman who is organizing this kind of marathon and they did this like 11 kilometer or 12 or 15 kilometer marathon or something. And she said they, she didn't, 
she insisted that everybody not stretch, you know, in the small circle of group of people that they were using to prepare. And she says, I took your advice and I had everybody practice bridge pose. And that was what we did before every run. We did bridge pose. And she said, Mm -hmm. no one was injured and no one was in pain the entire time. And I just thought like, there's the proof in the pudding. Like when we start to activate our muscular system and get it working well, that we actually will start to live pain-free and we actually really prevent injuries because our muscular system is doing the job it's supposed to do. But one thing you said earlier, and I wanted just to quickly comment on it, is like, so many people think that yoga is about stretching and, you know, and that becomes because we see so many images of these, you know, skinny, lanky, young Indian boys putting their feet behind their head. But you and I are not a young, skinny, lanky Indian boy, <laughs> you know? I mean, I can't put, right put our stuff behind our head. So, you know, but they can do that and that's fine. Mm-hmm. But nowhere in the yoga tradition, when I say tradition, I'm referring to scriptural reference. Like nowhere in the yoga scriptures does it say, you know, that you need to be flexible and that you should stretch to become more flexible. It, there's nowhere. So this idea of stretching has really become sort of a Western idea because of our perception of what we see when we see these pictures of these young, you know, lanky, uh, sinewy Indian boys doing these yoga postures. And so it's kind of an erroneous perception of yoga that we've developed. And that really has hijacked um, the yoga world. The yoga at the core is really a practice to remove the obstacles that's preventing us from living happy and Um, remove obstacles that is about us living our best life. All right. So I want to talk about why yoga is good for us. And I want to talk about us in the sense of women, middle-aged women, yeah. And then, yeah, I think I'd like to touch on that a little bit, if you don't mind. Well, I, why is yoga good for us, especially middle-aged women? Um, first of all, yoga, at its core, the reason why we do postures, so I'm going to, let me just talk a little bit about why we do postures, and then I'll bring the, the answer back to your specific question. Why we do yoga postures there's a few reasons why we do yoga postures. At the core of why we do yoga postures is to create a practice so that our mind goes inwards. Our mind is starting to go inside. Our mind is always going outside. Our mm-hmm. mind is going outside to, you know, get the latest iPhone. Our mind is going outside to seek pleasure. Um, our mind is going outside to avoid pain. Um, our mind is like busy trying to, you know, chase after a new relationship or to secure the relationship. Um, our mind is constantly obsessed too with making sure like the outside world is perfect. Mm-hmm. And a lot of us are always going outside. And because of that, we think that happiness is outside of ourselves. Even when you see like those cute little, those cute people that leave these posts on Facebook and say like, oh, happiness is inside of you. They're the ones that need to do the work the most, by the way. (laughs) So so people are always saying like, yeah, you've got to become happy on the inside. But the problem is that we've never taught our mind to go inside. We've never like done a practice where we teach our mind to go inside. And that's what postures do. Yoga postures in a very powerful way, if taught properly, start to train the mind to be able to go inward and reside within. Now, that's one part of it. The other part of it is that if we're doing these yoga postures well, we're actually starting to create a healthier body um, and a body that can really help us to live life, like do the things that we're doing in life. So you mentioned like you're walking and you're hurting yourself. And, And of course, your mind goes because you don't know different that you should stretch. 
Um, but the postures really aren't about stretching. The postures are about creating physiological stability. And so stability means so many things, but stability of mind, that the mind isn't constantly going outward, that the mind isn't reacting to mm -hmm. what's happening in your life, that you're able to maintain that inner peace. But stability also means that our body is able to function properly and that we're able to um, and have mobility. So when you have stability, you have all the mobility uh, in the world. Stability also means to live pain-free in the body. So developing a body that's pain-free. Middle-aged women, I mean, this is perfect for people as we get older. As we all get older, who we do, we actually start to become restricted. I remember that my, my grandfather, he used to walk around, his shoulders were like this, you know, he could not turn his head. He had to move his whole body, you know, to be able to look behind him. Uh, so as we get older, we start to become restricted. And we want to keep those muscles working so that there's fluidity in our movement um, and that we're not all tight and bunched up all the time. So this is an incredible practice, especially for people as we get older. It's, it's almost a must. And there's one pose um, that I call sort of the pose of the youth, you know? So at the very beginning of our conversation, I said I got into this to stay young. The only problem was, is I chose the wrong thing. I tried to stretch. What I really should have been doing was activating my muscles and making sure that my muscles were strong. So the one pose that I call the pose of youth, and it's the pose that people hate the most, but it's the best thing that you can do for your body is you lie on your stomach um, you're lying down in a prone position on your stomach. You have your arms beside you, so out to the sides, and you lift your chest and you lift your legs up as high as you can. Sometimes we call this Superman pose, that you are on your stomach and you just lift the chest and lift the arms up as high as you can, and all your back muscles will start to contract. And this is just golden. I mean, to make this part of a daily exercise for you, and I promise you, Jennifer, that if you do this, um, especially before you go walking, if you do bridge pose and shalabhasana, the, the Superman pose, you know, your whole walking experience will completely change after that. Oh, wow. Well, I really appreciate you pointing those things out, you know, giving us practical steps. And, you know, I think that's why a lot of times people are confused about yoga because, you know, there's a lot of mixed messages regarding yeah. it. So I appreciate that. All right. So tell me about your book, one, and your podcast, two, and three, your retreat. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah. So I'm going to start at the bottom and work that way. So my retreat is located, I, I'm an owner of Blue Osa Yoga Retreat, which is located in Costa Rica, I used to have a yoga studio in New York City. And um, in that studio, uh, I met uh, my business partner. And we were thinking or wanting to open up a yoga retreat in Costa Rica. Um, and it was a really cute story. We actually were driving down the road, um, going to another retreat I was leading. And there was a Century 21 sign outside our property. And so we stopped and, um, you know, went up to the gate and these angry dogs came running after us. And this very angry old French woman came running out, waving her arm <laughs> and telling us to get lost, go away. Oh, boy. Well, we went, we left with our tail between our legs and then we came back and that same old angry French woman turned into, you know, our mother. And we actually bought the property from her and she stayed on to become our head chef at our yoga oh, retreat. Uh, wow. So it's a little story. Um, you just never, don't, don't go running away every time somebody starts yelling at you. Sometimes you got to come back with a little bit of humility. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, so that opened in 2010 and this is going to be our 13th year in uh, next year. 
So we're very excited about it. And it's in one of the most beautiful places in Costa Rica, located on the Osa Peninsula. But, you know, since I opened Blue Osa and I've been leading a lot of yoga teacher trainings because of my own pain journey, I've been starting to investigate, you know, this whole idea of stretching and why are we so obsessed about it? And that kind of um, propelled me to do two things. And the first thing was to create my podcast series, which is called Stop Stretching. <laughs> um, people okay, can back on Spotify, but it's really an eight-part series that a journey into understanding why stretching is bad, why, and there's a whole episode I dedicated to the science behind it so that it's not just like this, you know, wishful thinking that there is actual science behind understanding, yeah, muscles become debilitated. And then the, we also give you solutions, like I just gave you a solution about doing Superman pose. So there's different uh, solutions that we provide. And we also dive into the history of understanding why stretching you know, became so, well, why stretching hijacked the yoga world, honestly. Um, and then to answer your question with the book, that also kind of propelled me to write a book. Um, again, called Stop Stretching. <laughs> um, and it, that, that book is actually called Stop Stretching, A New Yogic Approach to Master Your Body and Live Pain-Free. And in there, Jennifer is some really great hacks. So like you as a walker, for example, um, can go in there and go, well, I have pain in my hips. So what are some ways that I can start to activate the muscles in my hips and I go through like different exercises so that you can start to learn how to get those muscles activated and then ultimately start to strengthen those muscles. So it's a, it's a great book. Um, it's already, we've got like, I think 25 reviews or something and they're all five stars. So people have really liked it and um, I'm really excited to see where we can go with this. Okay, thank you. Awesome. And how can we connect with you on social or do you have a website? Um, tell us about us. Yeah, no, people can connect. Um, uh, if they go to my website, which is yogiaron.com, there's actually a free pain-free series that people can get. It's for free. Okay. Um, and it starts to take you through um, just kind of like just an education, a very simple, easy, digestible education on where certain muscles are in the body and how to activate those muscles. So like you as a walker, for example, like, yeah, there's a lot of muscles that are affecting the knees. We're talking about the knees, mm -hmm. but you don't need to actually worry about all those muscles. We need to just get into what are the major muscles, like the glutes, for example, and so I go through that, and it's a, just a really nice, easy series for people to access and start putting into practice some of the different um, muscle activation techniques uh, that we use to get those muscles working again. So mm -hmm. I would suggest going to my website, and that's a gateway to my videos on YouTube. It's a, I have a whole YouTube channel. We put out two videos a week. So there's a lot of different resources that people uh, can use. If you want to find me, just go to YouTube, search Yogi Aaron. Um, you can search yogiaron.com um, as well. Okay, thank you. And we put those links in the show notes. Um, thank you. So thank what, you. Is, what is Yogi Aaron grateful for today? Right at this very moment, I am so, I have so much gratitude from the health of my body. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I have, you know, dealt with pain so much in my life, physical pain, that in this moment, I have a lot of gratitude for my mobility and my health. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. And um, going off that, since pain is one of those things that either have a stopping or starting something, um, tell us how yoga can help us manage our pain. Well, that's a loaded question. How long do you have? <laughs> one, one, of the chapters, <laughs> one of the chapters in my book is actually called 
who are you without your pain? Mm. And I find that there's a lot of people addicted to their pain. So the first question that we have to ask ourselves is, do we want to become pain-free? Because a lot of us don't know who we are without our pain. Um, a lot of us, you know, thrived in, in our pain. So that's something that we have to become honest about. Um, you know, like just like somebody that's going through recovery, you know, the, the first step to getting to recovery is admitting we have a problem. So we have to admit that we have a problem. And so that's the first step. And then the second step is to address it. So is it more mental or is it physical or is it bones? I would suggest that a lot of us are dealing with like, you know, physical pain. So yoga can definitely help with that. Um, using the principles that I teach in my book, Stop Stretching, which really starts to address like how we can start to deal head on with some of the physical um, problems that we have. Um, so that's sort of more on the, on the physical side. On the mental side of it, um, like I said, that's a, huge, that's a very loaded question. But it starts with asking the question, who am I? Like, what do I identify myself with? Um, and, and what are my opinions and judgments and beliefs about the world that I have which could be actually contributing to me having more pain up here. Um, and that's, that's a process. It's not an easy process. But one of the first steps in starting to turn that process around is through the breath. And so yoga, some teachers say that yoga is all about the breath. And there could not be more of a truer statement. When we talk about yoga, we're really talking about learning to unite, to yoke the breath and the mind together. And as we start to do that, there's an awakening that happens in the mind and the mind starts to have a taste, if you will, of what real freedom in this world is like and, and starts to shift the momentum of the mind. So if the mind is going you know, this direction into its suffering, um, when we start to yoke or merge the mind and breath together, the mind actually starts to move in this direction. So it starts to move in another direction and we start to shift uh, the momentum of our thoughts. And in a very, very, very powerful way, it's not hard to do, Jennifer. We All we need to do is just learn to sit <laughs> um, in a chair. doesn't matter where you sit, just sit. Mm -hmm. and, you know, sofa. I'm sitting on my sofa right now. And um, and then just close your eyes and start to breathe in and breathe out and follow the breath. And a lot of people say, well, I don't know how to meditate. I don't know what to do. Well, set your timer for five minutes. And for five minutes, commit to watching the breath. Inhale and exhale and inhale and exhale. If you can do that every day, you will change the course of your life. And there's a, there's a saying that I often have in my yoga classes. If you can change your breath, you will change your life. Wow. If you want to change your life, change your breath. Change your breath. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that really wraps it up for me. And I appreciate you, you know, explaining that. Because now we see, well, if it's not stretching, then what is it? Yeah, it's, it's the breath. So I appreciate that explanation. Are you? Yeah. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you, Yogi Aaron, for coming and talking to us today. I really appreciate you. Any final thoughts? Oh my God. It's so many final thoughts. Stop stretching. Start activating. <laughs> Good stuff. Thank you. You're welcome. Sure. Thank you for having me.